I don't know what they're going to think about it. You know, I, you know, I've heard other songwriters say too that like sometimes a song just comes to you, and if you don't write it down, it's going to go on down the street, and somebody else is going to write that same song. <laughs> they travel around like that, and some of these songs I don't know where to let them go <laughs> or keep on going down the street or not. <laughs> you know, I wrote this one song called Sabu visits the Twin Cities alone, and I. Uh, I stayed in my room for about three days because I thought the song police were going to come after me or something. But it turned out to be a pretty good song anyway. We're going to take a short break and come right back and pick up where we left off. I've got something I want to ask Jack. <laughs> Don't go away. This is getting good. Of all the places that you've been, and you've been just about everywhere there is to go, what's your favorite? Golly, damn. Just right there in the front seat of my motor home, I guess. Just moving. <laughs> moving. Yeah, moving. I like, uh, I like it in the, in the country. Just anywhere where there's not too many traffic, you know. Well, you go to Europe a lot. I've been, I've only been there three times, but I stayed over there for six solid years one time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you if you liked it. Well, uh, you have albums that, that you recorded while you, were, while you were in Europe. Yeah, I got about 12 or 13 of them over there. They love cowboys over there. Yeah, evidently so. I sure had a nice time uh, traveling around with my cowboy hat and singing, you know, on street corners and Paris and even down in Greece, Athens, I sang on a street corner one day. Was it that hat? No, it wasn't it. This, is, uh, this hat was almost brand new when I gave it to you that time. You mean I messed it up that much? Yeah, you kind of broke it in for me. <laughs> How long you had it? When, when did he give you that hat? This is an interesting He thing. gave it to me at the end of our tour, the one of the, the ski 12 tour. 12 years ago. Yeah. And 12, year, 12 and a half years ago, and, and I tried wearing it for about three months because I was so proud of it. Uh, the Ramblin' Jack Elliott gave me his cowboy hat, and it was a size too small for my head. This guy that made it for him suited it to his skull, and uh, and I'd go around and it's this little hat that's on top of my head, and I go, Ramblin' Jack Elliott gave me this. <laughs> so finally, I stopped wearing it because it gave me headaches. And Jack asked me if I still had it when he came to town last night. And I had it sitting in there on my hat rack. This is pretty amazing because of all the hats I've had about 18 hats and. I started to write a book about all the different hats I had and tried to keep track of them, what I was doing when I wore them, what kind of hat, color, size, and make, and model, and so forth. One of them got stolen by a movie star friend of mine. Who? Uh, Michael J. Pollard. Where oh, is, yeah. Well, still Where is Michael? Right after that, I haven't seen him again. He took the hat and headed for the hills. Probably made a house in it somewhere. <laughs> right. I wish him well. I'd love to see him again. You were in you were in Greenwich Village back in the early '60s, around in that period yes. of time when when things were really starting to happen. Dylan, yeah. uh, Shell, Silverstein was yeah. hanging out down there. Mm -hmm. What was it? What was it like? I would have loved to have been there with you, John. Oh yeah! Wow. It makes me real lonesome when I go to the village now and I don't see anybody that remotely or even resembles the people that I knew or didn't know, but they knew me, and I'd, you know, like take a little walk across town and everybody would say hi to me, and they knew me by my name, and I knew about half of them by their name, too. And now it seems like a, just a total zoo, a freak show. I'm, I'm not comfortable <laughs> walking on the streets there, really, and the places where I used to go aren't even there. All of my favorite places where I used to sing or eat or whatever, have been converted into a shoe store or a Middle Eastern restaurant. I just Some recently line. found out they have after-hours bars in New York City. I mean, in, down in the village. I never knew there was any. I thought they were yeah. hiding the garbage down there, those little steps. Oh, yeah. I walked down one night and there's a light on. And I beat on the door and walked in and introduced myself and stayed till 7 in the morning. I was one time with Bob Dylan and some stranger, perfect stranger, didn't, probably didn't know who Bob was, and so Bob was very comfortable with him. He walked right up to Bob on the street as we were leaving this hangout of ours because it was closing. It was closing time. And the guy said, I know a place where you can go. And Bob said, oh, yeah, where is it? And 
He said, it's right around the corner, follow me. And we all followed him. We went down there and we spent about two or three hours having a great old time in this hidden away downstairs little place with a jukebox and a pool table and everything. <laughs> drink it. That was in my drinking days. I don't drink anymore. Can't handle it. And you're not a problem when you're stoned, as Chris said in his song. If I did get stoned, it would be a problem, but I just don't get stoned anymore because I don't want the problems. Uh, they make good stories, but I can't handle it. <laughs> we got to take a break. Don't go away because we're coming right back with some more. At 12.30 p.m. Eastern, 11.30 Central, 9.30 a.m. Pacific on TNN, the Nashville Network. John, we're about to run out of time, but before we do, I'd like to thank you and Ramblin' Jack Elliott for being here tonight and I'd like to I'd like to go home with one of the songs that you and Donnie Fritz wrote yep great right. song great song the oldest baby in the world she got the mind of a child and a body peeking over the hill she would if she could and she should, but nobody will. With her nails painted red and her hair so unnaturally curled, I think that she may be the old. Your turn now. She's tasted the night light. What's left her was nothing but hunger. And all the available men seem to think that they want something young. But youth is a costume And a beauty within lies unfurled And I think that she may be The oldest baby in the world the sound of the rain but you know she's still afraid of the thunder 